Hello and welcome to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast. It is Friday, August 6th. Mike, it's the last episode of Season 1 and we are in full, full transfer season. The Grealish transfer happened. There's rumors flying around. But, Mike, what the fuck happened? Lionel Messi's a free agent and he's available. Oh my what god, happened? we had to we had to redo the whole the whole like show uh around two three o'clock today leo messi just bombshells and he's like you know what i'm not fucking coming back and everybody went wait 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 wait. what what it was it's like, like eight barcelona, o'clock in spain like barcelona tweeted it's like yeah but, yeah like a pissed off ex-girlfriend like no he's not coming back I'm like oh, jesus God. lady fucking cool it he's the best player ever maybe Makes make an exception, but it was one of those where he was like, "I'm done with you people. I I was it's, you fucked me already once. I'm done. I'm out." I feel like it's so it's so big that it feels like they should have broken into the Olympics or like they should have been like they should have stopped sports center. Like the president has been like, shot. Like like it felt almost yeah. underreported. I'm like, what the don't what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Yeah, it was just and casual. Like everyone being cool and just like, yeah, this is normal. I'm like, this isn't normal. No, that's this not normal. Fabrizio insane. Romano had the news, and I think it was around like, yeah, just before two o'clock. And you're right, everybody's like, wow, yeah, okay, cool, that's that's good. And like the weird thing, it was almost like he died too, because there was all of these Barcelona tributes, right? All of his highlight videos and all this stuff coming out, and people was like, oh man, end of an era, Leo Messi leaving Barcelona, not like not. The world is on alert. Where the fuck is he going to go? Like, that wasn't the first yeah, thing. Had, like, that wasn't the first thing, like, thought I, people had. I posted it, you know, nine no, hours No, no, no. I know so you ha- I know like you posted like that. But news. what I'm saying is, but, but there was no, like, the football transfer world is so hyper speculative that you yeah, would no, think sure. if the, the, sure, but the, the biggest of the biggest free agents ever gets onto the market and can go anywhere. The thing is, he made 70 million euros last year as a salary, by the way. I'm going to put that out there first. But hypothetically, you don't have to make this That's big transfer. So high. Yeah, I know. I know. But you don't have to make this whole big transfer fee, right? Like you don't have to make it happen for Barcelona and then pay him 70 million. He's good. Hypothetically, that's actually a steal if you paid him 70 million euros for a with no transfer steal. fee. Yeah, right? And he's 34. But so – why tell me laurent why wasn't the media all over is he going to city is he going to psg is he going to Bayern? is he going is he going to real madrid wouldn't that be the greatest story of all time if he went to madrid i, I think that i think the internally he's so mad at bartomeo that he's like fuck you you know how much i fucking hate you i'm gonna go beat you at madrid i think oh a couple, I, I think there's a couple things going on here right one is we were the world the 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 english press specifically was on Grealish watch that was like second by second we had Kane we don't know what's happening there things are happening the transfer market sort of focuses on on certain players and then I think and this is just my anecdotal outside opinion I, I think Messi doesn't play the game right he doesn't have it doesn't seem like there's a guy like there's no Brian Windhorst there's no like connected guy who you're like oh that's his guy the way like Scott well, wait a minute. Moros. He never he he been at Barcelona since he was what eleven years old. So right, why would place, there be a Brian Windhorst? Pla- right, but that place is a sieve. If something's coming out, it comes out because there are forty five people on the board. It's very yeah. political. All this stuff is going on. I think what's happening is, and this is another side story that I don't quite understand, but La Liga itself took on a private equity loan of something mm-hmm. like. Three hundred million dollars, or or three hundred million dollars per team, some ridiculous. Okay. Maybe it's three point five billion dollars to try and settle their debts. I mean, this is a league, and I don't think people really realize this. The pandemic is really affected all the leagues, aside from the Premier League, which has taken a hit, but was always much more wealthy than their leagues. Like France's teams are going to go out of business. Like they're, yeah. they, Lille won the league and is selling all its players. I think that, that happens, though. Well, that that happens, but but that you're happens, right. But it's, not at this. State, it's not, not Lille. At this state, it's, yeah, it's not Lille who's getting hit by the pandemic as much as the lower teams yeah. in the top yeah. division, and even the teams in England who are in the third, fourth division, yeah, they, who generally do down. okay. 
But right. That's that, the that's gate. where you, you if you look at the pyramid, you go, right, that's where you would think it would happen. Right. And right. it is. So, in, it, and it's the happening. Thing, in the thing with this messy thing is that one, it's out of the blue Two, they had a deal. Right. Yeah. Didn't there he tweet that no, it, like it's happening soon or something like that? Right. There is a known cap, which I didn't even know existed. And Barcelona made moves. Right. They bought players like. Garcia and on freeze. Well, Garcia was cheap. They got a couple guys. They got Sergio Aguero, who's like, well, what? What the fuck? What am I doing here? Why are? What? Yeah. He's wow. Got a he's probably Spider-Man look. He's probably like, I'm playing with Memphis to pay. This is not what I signed up for. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, I forgot about so, that. So, so there's something else going on here that I think Laporte, who is Messi's guy and is the president of Barcelona, the previous president, Bartomeu may literally go down as the worst owner slash operator in history. He may have destroyed Barcelona. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, and so I think they're trying to leverage this deal and say, and and between Laporta and, and Messi, they're like, this is our league. Without Messi right now, there is no La Liga. He's right. the draw. For in the fact, whole I league. Saw... I, uh, ESPN Plus or ESPN had an, a story about how ESPN Plus has the, the rights to La Liga now, and it's this big messy Barcelona story because they don't have the messy Ronaldo connection anymore. Uh, and now, you know, a friend and I were talking about it, like who's going to watch this, right? You would always Nobody. sort of, you would always, even when Ronaldo left, you would still be like, okay, El Clasico is this weekend. All right, fine. Or one of the, or Atletico is playing one of the two big teams. Okay. But now it's like, uh, all right, I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's really right. bad. So I think they're trying to – there's this thing going on on the side. At For the first five hours, I kind of was like, oh, he's going to go to PSG even though I don't want him to. Mm -hmm. The city world went, – we went through this last time. We had like a whole train meter, the, the, the messy train coming and going, the transfer train. So we're kind of like, I can't, I can't with this again. Just but wait, but, but, but again, there is <laughs> one tremendous difference – and it's that he's a free agent. The only team, it's a financial thing. But the thing is that you don't actually all the financial fair play, all of the shit that everyone has killed um, Manchester City for people. over the over the the whole week and much longer than that. But specifically over the last week, you're taking boyhood heroes from Mas, you know Aston Villa and and Tottenham and blah 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 blah. Well, you don't have to do that now. You can just sign yeah. a fucking guy. Like you just sign him for, you know what I mean? So like I said, 70 million euro, like, by the way, that would have, what, what were the figures being tossed around last year with Manchester city? 200. Yeah. Yeah. And then you would have to pay the motherfucker. So, okay. Uh, yeah. That's a steal. So yeah. if they so, want him, they've got him. Yeah. And, but and, PSG and can I, have him too. I don't, I don't think he's going to leave now. I think this is a leverage thing. And they're going all in, a, in a sort of a similar way that that Harry Kane is going all in to get to City, right? So you it's think the team thing. is doing this? So do you think he's trying to do the same thing as as he's Kane? He's in cahoots with Laporte. They're trying to get a better deal on how much money they get, and they're trying yeah. to put it on Tebas to say, "Oh, La Liga is trying to is trying to screw Barcelona out of Messi, and you know who runs La Liga? Real does." Right. Right. <laughs> right. So there's a reason all this stuff segues into a lot of the themes of the season, right? This all goes back to COVID. It goes back to lockdown. It goes back to the Super League and how La Liga has basically been spending over its earnings to keep up with the Premier League, which is the gold standard for revenue generating leagues in mm -hmm. world football. It's not close. It's in fact the Premier League is probably better at it than the champions league but the champions league is still oh, yeah. the most prestigious only because it gets the other teams like on a team by team game by game basis i mean the premier league is better run than the champions league for sure yeah definitely right? the narratives are better the systems in place are better they don't have to deal with krasnodar and fucking racist chants you know they well there's the that piece they, but they it's also that. it's also that you have such a cool down period in the champions league Right, I've always said we we've said on this show before. If you had the Premier League run for 
eight. You had no breaks to go midweek into wherever the fuck. You actually had midweek games in the Premier League, much like they do in the lower divisions, and uh, yeah, in the three. championship. And then you would basically, at the end of the season, the top four make the playoffs, and they go into the Champions League. What a what a novel concept that would be. And then <laughs> you have you have you run the same schedule, right? It's basically think of it like the way that the Euros was run. Yeah. Those storylines, those narratives, they don't have a cool down timer of three to four weeks sometimes, right? Even in the knockout stages, there's two weeks in between sometimes. So yeah, it's it's only it's 16 games max. You play six right. games over, geez, the, three months, three months. Yeah, it's ridiculous. four months. Yeah, right. and it, and it was just there to to sort of expand things. But I do think I think my prediction is is that he goes back to Barcelona. Okay. And the league blinks and basically makes a Braithwaite exception and goes, remember that time when Barcelona had no sprikers and had no money and the transfer window had closed and they just let mess, they let Barcelona get a striker for some right. fucking reason? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think it's possible. So, so there are exceptions that when, but, you're, but when, you are the, when you are the league, we make yeah, exceptions. Yeah, you can change the rules. Um, right. I, I really do want to dig out one of the rumors that – which is what caused this, right? So he had just played at the Copa America with, uh, I love I this. <laughs> I, I love it. With Giovanni Lo Celso, uh, hey. with, with, um, and with Christian Romero. Uh, hey. Christian Romero was the Serie A defender of the year at Atalanta. Emmy Martinez, um, our other friend, Emmy Martinez. Go right, right. But, but so Romero is a good, good young defender, uh, 23 years old. And Spurs have been, courting him shall we say and when i say that um it means they're taking six weeks to sign a guy that should take 10 days and they do this and they try to cheapen the the offer and we'll throw in add-ons and this and that and it's just how they do business and they miss out on a lot of players like this thankfully reportedly this has gotten over the line apparently he's in london right now and he's going to be signing on the dotted I think line done. yeah i think, I think it's done. done and he's going to be announced tomorrow um, yeah, so Messi's was done too, so be careful. <laughs> right, right. So uh, there's Messi a, there's a has been machine, there's imploring. There's a fax machine in Madrid that uh, has David De Gea's name on De- it. David De Gea, right. <laughs> uh, so Christian Romero really showing promise for Messi in Argentina at the Copa. And Messi effectively sends word back overseas, sign this fucking guy. He's great. We need a defender. I want him. I want him. I want him. He's my countryman. Get him and I will be happy. That did not happen. That was not the case. And it's one of the reasons. I'm not – listen, I'm not saying it's the reason. It's definitely oh, one no, of it's the definitely, reasons. It's definitely the reason. I mean, It's the it's reason. It's it. So uh, so Messi is pissed off about that and he fucks off. So Lionel <laughs> Messi, let me be the first to welcome you to North London to play with Harry Kane because he's going to stay too. So yeah, it's going to be yeah. great. We're going to have Lionel Messi. We're going to have Kane. We're going to have Romero. Um, yeah. It's going to be it's- awesome. Oh. And and this this messy news is burying like my my dream come true of uh, this is Grealish the funniest part fi- yeah fi- finally signing for City the most non secret secret thing that was happening uh, they draw they drew it out made it dramatic they made the video they showed his calves first because of, uh, uh, of course and and I and I and I I would like to talk a little bit about like why Jack Grealish has a little bit of extra um, it's swag he's got the factor he's got the cool factor and i said this the other day i'm city are devoid of cool their most interesting person in the club is i mean outside of playing right like they could play cool but they literally people consider them boring right they're just like no i'm trying to think of who would be the most interesting player on the field the most interesting person the, the leader and the most interesting person on the team is pep right He's the one with the charisma. He right? fucking I, I hate no. It's yeah, okay. yes, yes, he does. But he is. He is ultimately. Yeah. When you think about the 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 most famous person on the team, it's is Pep. Yep. is Pep, right? He's it should be one, De Bruyne, but he's. It's the, it, it, a but mute. It, we have the memes of him dancing. You have like Pep taking a drink. Like when they make memes about City, they're Pep memes, right? But now, right. hopefully. Grealish brings something. He brings a swag. He brings a style of play, the low socks, the hair. Um, he's English, which always is good, but he's not like a John Stone. Oh, we're just taking one game. No, he's he's he's, he's, he's Beckham game. English, right? He's, yeah, he's, he's got some juice. English. He's got some juice. Uh, and I mean, if you watch the Euros, 
that they were dying for him to come on, right? And just, I screamed about it every time we talked about England on this show, right? So here, I mean, here, here's an indictment of Gareth Southgate. He did not play him, and Pep Guardiola was like, "Yeah, we want him for a hundred million dollars." What the fuck were yep. you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, here's Rebecca one for Lowe, you. And I Rebecca have not... Lowe hammered him. I listened to Rebecca Lowe had a podcast. All right, right. I have Gareth not. Southgate, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I have not seen any of this, so no spoilers. Do you know who Jack Grealish reminds me of? Jamie Tart, do 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 do. Jamie Tart, do 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 do. From uh, Ted Lasso. So I haven't. I, I'm very excited to to watch the the second season. My fiance is a wall at the moment. She's up in New York, fucking off doing a bunch of nonsense. So I haven't been allowed to watch it. No, that's her. okay. It's okay. You're better um, off because watching it episode by episode is is painful. You're just like, I just want to watch more. <laughs> no, no, I prefer doing that. I, I like it, but I'm gonna catch up. Okay. But anyway, yeah, he so, does. So, so, he, I actually called that last season because I was like, yeah. he's just got that it right, and I'm like, he just doesn't. He plays for a shit team. He doesn't play for Man City. Now he does. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> so and, there and, he is. And I think this is the next. Like, I think this is the next phase for City. It's we're good. We win. We're competent. We're technical. We're the best team in the league. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now it's. Can we be the best team in the league and the most famous team in the league? The the, right? the sexiest, the, the coolest. The, 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 the cool factor, right? So yeah. you need Grealish. You need, and I'm going to say it and I don't care, black people are cool. You need cool black people on your team. <laughs> yeah, right? okay. Is, no. I mean, like yeah. Mario Balotelli was the coolest thing that ever happened to City, and he was a footnote, right? Like he passed the I don't think England was ready for him. I'm not saying, I'm not no, saying anything about Balotelli. <laughs> No, no, no. The guy fucking um, drove, had a, had a here's a question. Here's a question in, for you. In, in fatigue colors. <laughs> here's a question for you about Grealish. Do uh-huh. you think this raises – because you just said, right? Like all of those things about City are true. They're technical. They're talent. They're, they're the best team in the league. But yeah. Sky Sports still wouldn't give them the time of day. You'd still rather hear about the Liverpool, Liverpool front three Manchester or Arsenal, Manchester United or Arsenal. Right. Imploding. They're still more Do you think – For sure. Yeah, and it's obviously because of the viewership and all that stuff is slanted because historically they have much bigger fan bases. I understand that. Do you think that Jack Grealish raises the profile of Manchester City, which is such a stupid thing to think about if you if no, we it, it dial matters. it back it a matters. second? Listen, they gave him the number ten, right? Like that's no, a I big know, deal. I know. Yeah, which is weird because Messi's well, gonna I, take I, it when he signs there. I think it does, but <laughs> not yet, not yet. I don't think it does a lot. I think it does a little because because Grealish is famous in England, right? He's not okay. really international. It's they did him a disservice by not letting him play at the Euros because the stadium changed. Well, then he would have been. A, yeah, but right, they, uh, he could have he could have broken out, been the star of the Euros. Well, then he would have cost you 150. Yeah, well, he had an escape clause. It was in the contract. Yeah, right. That was amazing. So the owner of of uh well the operator the the president of villa did a five minute video laying out the whole thing very cool very cool like it was a bit of prison video but it was still cool to have the president of the team say this is what happened jack had a hard time he wanted to stay he signed a four-year deal he wanted champions league in his contract was a release clause for 100 million there were several clubs that came and city hit the clause that was the number and you know we know it was happening and we did such and such and such things we're going to be less reliant on one person we're happy blah 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 it was awesome and all the villa fans like oh awesome this is cool yeah absolutely so i mean i I feel really good i'm fucking buzzing i'm like (laughs) yeah you should be i mean he's a great player but talk to me a little bit about how manchester city is going to line up this year assuming for the moment that they don't go in for harry kane and and it's not I'm not speaking about the Kane situation. There's really nothing new to report or Assume talk about Kane there. Assume Kane doesn't happen, right? Assume Aside Kane doesn't from happen. Kane not playing. You you don't have a striker. A striker. It's so Gabriel so talk to me about. Well, you have a bad striker. So but but with all a, of that no, talent, we have a middling striker. Okay, I I see small differences there, but nonetheless, <laughs> you have. So 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 much talent on the wings and in Phil the Foden. in the central Phil attacking Foden. midfield. You've got let's just let's just go through it for a second. Phil Foden, Kevin De Bruyne, Raheem Sterling, Ferran Torres. Who, by the way, a lot of people forget He's about him. Really fucking good. Really good. Bernardo Silva, Riyad Mahrez, 
Oh yeah, and Jackie Grealish now. So that's seven guys that And you forgot I, our that, leading goal scorer. Well, Gundogan plays deeper. Yeah, he does. So these are <laughs> he's, central, in the Fernand, he's in the Fernandinho committee. These are players who can are. play either wing. These are players who wing, yeah, up front, right? So seven players that would walk into any other team in the Premier League, arguably all of them. In fact, give or take one or two. Mares, Grealish. Mares, Grealish, Mares and Grealish specifically were the fulcrums of teams that were really fucking good. And Mares yeah. with Vardy fucking won the league, which still seems insane. It seems like yeah. 47 years ago. That was like last week. Uh, that yeah. What the fuck but so talk to me about with all of that talent, you can't play seven attacking midfielders oh, or wingers. I think there, I think there are talk a lot me. of, I think there's mixing and matching that happens. I think it's, it's about for city. And this is the difference between City and United. For City, they know their points are made against shit teams that sit deep. You, they're together like, okay. we need Jack Grealish to win us those games the way Mares does. Because right now, when teams sit deep and they have a hard time breaking them down and they're going around and doing their fucking thing. And it is hard. City usually do it. They oh, they rely on Mares on one side to cut in and shoot. Or De Bruyne on the break hitting a... Hitting, uh, hitting Raheem who's moving, right? In transition, they, they can break teams down. But when there is no transition, it's it's sort of basketball -y again. They're fine in transition, they're good. When they are in set when they're set in front of teams, when the teams are bunkering in, they're gonna have now they're gonna have both sides, right? They're gonna have mm -hmm. Grealish on one side to work in that little almost David Silva spot on one side. Yeah. With with guys making runs, because he'll get to the byline and people will be able to make runs. Raheem Sterling should have a good time. Uh, if he can get in the box, I think the question is: is who's going to get on all these crosses? That's our big, that's City's big problem. And I do think, and I really, when I think it through, and I look at the squad, the best finisher on the team who can play the nine is Foden. <laughs> but okay. Ferran Torres has been there, Jesus has been there. Uh, City are bad when Sterling play the nine; he shouldn't ever be there. But there are guys that have been deputized into those spots. But I think it's really just about someone regularly making the run that a nine would make rather than just trying to occupy center backs. And that's what makes City difficult. And that's why they won the league without a striker, really, most of the season yeah. is someone took responsibility as a collective. Or maybe they designated someone, but the front three or four or whatever, they would move around. And City play in the half spaces. They're eight. So De Bruyne and whoever is next to him, sometimes it's Silva, sometimes it's Gundogan. Will they'll they'll play five up front with one holder? Yeah, and then the the, the, well, the fullbacks against, tuck against in. These... The fullbacks the fullbacks tuck in so that they don't get caught on a break. What this you're well right. What you're, you're describing what you're describing is classic city against a bunkering team, right? Because yeah. unless it's Mourinho Spurs who are inviting that on purpose to try and hit you the other way, which thank God we don't have to deal with anymore. Um, you're basically saying, go ahead. I dare you. I've got Kyle yeah. Walker. He's the fastest kid in the world. Like, yeah. you know, like he's, he's going to catch you. I love you. him for that. He's a, he will catch you. One day he won't, and it will be bad. Right. But, uh, right. I mean, but, but that's really what he's there for. It's just about never having anybody play who's out of form. It'll just never happen. Of right? course. And you're going to have that as an, as an indicator. And you're going to have rotation then, because of form injuries and then of course midweek games with all the competition right. i mean city's gonna, gonna play 65 games yeah so yeah and then the yeah. Bruyne gets knocked a lot. but if there's a but if if you're playing liverpool at anfield or if you're playing in a, a champions league round of 16 game or whatever one, yeah. who do you see as the the attacking band and i guess the supporting group in the midfield i don't know i don't know it'll depend where it is there's only a few Assume I, everybody's healthy. Assume the, everybody's the, the on the top trust. Time. The trust right now, there's only a handful of guys that I there's four that are there always. Diaz, okay. Walker's in a big game. No, I know, I know. I'm saying up top though. Yeah, um, De Bruyne, Gundogan, Foden. You think Foden is that high on that pecking order? Oh, for on a big game, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. It's it's Sterling, Mares. Well, Silva's gonna go. Bernardo's the one who's going to go because he was kind of, okay. he was always kind of on the fringes anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Either it's being planted or someone is saying that he wants to leave. He's never really 
been a loud I want to leave guy, but he's the one that wants to leave. Uh, but it's I don't weird know because he was there's having no a, one. There's no one to buy him. He was right. He was having a big breakout season two years ago, and then he did the, in, in the Centurion season. He was incredible. Yeah, he was great. Um, who was it? It was uh, Benjamin Mendy with the the racist joke that he was just that a joke among him. teammates, yeah, but it, it fucked him up. Him. It did. Yeah, because he got it's really interesting. He, he sent out a picture of basically like a tar baby kind of like 1950s big mammy sending it to his friend like they a cartoon played at monaco together yeah and it wrecked him i think the social media got him and it took a long time he the the big issue for him was he wouldn't shoot he stopped shooting like yeah. something and he wouldn't score goals so he's playing in this attacking team and he never would shoot and only towards the end he started he had a couple of big goals late in the season that he actually shot which was like but i'll still his game the big 2000 the the, the january 3rd Liver uh, at at Etihad 2019 is still, is still he never stopped running. He's got no, that. Yeah, like if he goes to Atletico, he'll be fucking awesome. Right. That feels like a good fit for him, right? I feel like yeah. that that he'll might make run. sense. He'll yeah. just run. run hey, run, run. we've got a Portuguese coach. We'll take him. We'll take him at Spurs. <laughs> I'd like that. That would be good. I, as be good, as yeah. a make weight of the players who would go as a make weight for Kane, who would actually leave. I think he yeah. actually makes the most. I, I, Laporte is the guy you want, but he's not going to leave. Um, he wants to leave. Oh, is that right? He wants to go to Spain. Mm, yeah, well, he's not coming to fucking North London, that's for sure. Well, I mean, um, he he uh, he he he's he's out of favor. It's it's John, it's Stones and and Laporte, right. Stones and Diaz now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, there's just there's no gratitude for American Laporte. It's just. It's a shame. It's a shame. But well, you know what? I want to speak in gratitude. I want to talk about my friend Joe at Attitude of Gratitude Consulting. That, folks, is a segue you can't pay for. Um, but seriously, the, Joe really does a great job of taking care of both myself, Laurent, uh, and and all of his folks that he that get in touch with him. Um, you know, he takes care of making sure you know how to pay your bills, and not just that, but pay your bills responsibly. Make smart decisions for you for your family uh we've said before on the show talk about finding money in the couch cushions it's honestly that's an undersell it's way more than that right so um you can see the website now if you're listening to the show go to attitude of gratitude consulting.com we're gonna we're looking at it right now on the live video it's great it's a handsome website it's got a lot of different things on it but like he's got the baby he's holding he's, he's just a likable guy he's down to earth you'll just call him right now attitude of gratitude consulting Joe's going to take great care of you. Uh, again, attitude of gratitude consulting.com for all the information you'll need. And you can schedule a call right on the website. It's pretty, pretty good. We're recording at night, so I'm not going to bother the poor guy, but I got to call him tomorrow. I'm trying to buy a house soon. So we'll see. We'll see what Joe thinks about that. He'd be like, well, Mike, you're an idiot. So uh, and he's not wrong. He's not wrong. But. Getting back to the show, I want to talk a little bit more about the Jack Grealish less village Aston from Aston Villa. Villa. Yeah. I well, am big. I am big on them, and what, what, it's so what, what, interesting. What, uh, what brought you? I was I was in on them after the seven two, which was the greatest event of last season. To, in a it season was the way that they without... handled this summer. Yeah. Um, well, they were super fun last year. I was wrong about them last year. I was right about – we were both right about Emmy Martinez, and that's a big part of it for me. I love him. Uh, favorite keeper in, in the league for sure. And Tyrone um, Mings but just, and Tonza and the whole, se- the whole team. And good. Watkins. They're a likable group. Um, and when you sit here and you go, well, they lost their biggest asset, their boyhood hero, blah, blah, blah. But they did it the right way. They knew they were losing him. As you said, the, the video with the, the president saying, look, this was going to happen. We knew it was going to happen. They literally said, we knew we were getting 100 million pounds for him. We're going to go out. We're going to go get Emilio, Emiliano Bandia. We're going to yeah. go get Leon Bailey. We're going to go get Danny Ings. That Danny Ings signing, I think today or the day before, whenever it was, it, first of all, it was old-fashioned. It was old-fashioned in the way that – you didn't hear it. You didn't hear it rumored. It wasn't like a he's in, you know, he's in talks because with he's, because he's Danny Ings. It was yeah. just it was just it showed they up on the on the on the radar. You're like, oh shit, 
There's a new signing. Well, I mean, I think to be fair, when he did not re-sign with Southampton, you knew he was available, right? No, he no, felt- no, absolutely. But a lot of teams, including Spurs, were were linked to him. The, you never once, backup. you never once heard Villa linked with with Danny Ings. It was just, oh, Danny Ings plays for Aston Villa now. You're like, that's fucking cool. I almost yeah. wish that. In the same way that, like in the in in the U.S. in the first day of NBA and NHL free agency, and even NFL starting to get there, they just do the whole thing. <laughs> they just go nuts, right? And it's just like yeah. there's no. I mean, sometimes and there often are, but like a trade happens. It's like this shit just like a watch bomb, right? Just oh, boom, yeah. this happened. Everybody's yeah. like, holy shit! That yeah, was I mean, sort it, of it would, like it a, would be a it would bomb. be great if they if they just did. The transfer window. Right. It's just so protracted. Like, and I know I'm biased as a Spurs supporter because it takes forever from a Spurs perspective, much more than other teams. But yeah, but that's a lot of teams. The courting the the player, blah, blah, blah. But that's the pain we have of having a non closed, open, competitive sport that's competitive against across a continent. And you can Mm -hmm. buy players from South America. Oh, sure. Because the whole thing is so open, it's got to have some rules that are governing the whole thing right like the sure. nba can do it that way because it's like the season ends the draft happens what We're, we don't care what's happening in china like we mm-hmm. we're the we set the rules because it's our league and it's closed and we have the 30 teams so we can do it the way we want so yeah, you yeah. know as much as as much as we really like the european model and we're enjoying you know the sort of fruits of this league that we're falling in love with and can't stop thinking about it, it there is dar- downsides, and you know that's the, that's one of the things. The transfer window sucks. By the way, historically yeah. there was no transfer window. You could just sign players anytime. That was man. That, modern, would... that was a modern thing. Guys would just show up. Interesting. <laughs> um, but but they but... Could, they weren't free, right? They could they could they had the right. they had some they had the equivalent of the of the uh, Messerschmitt case. Like they had to be free. They just they could perpetually renew your contract. Mm-hmm. Yeah, way we like old, baseball. old, old school baseball, right? Um, but yeah, so I, I, I'm I'm really falling in love with with Villa. I think they're my new wolves. Uh, I think that <laughs> I'm going to be following them. Wolves, but Villa no, are. I mean, well, we and I'll get into Nuno in a second, but uh, you know, Villa, it, they just there was a line when Tottenham sold Gareth Bale in 2013, and yeah. it was mocked quite a bit. Uh, yeah, it think. was. They sold Elvis to buy the Beatles. Now, and the, the Bale 7, as we talked about in the f- last few shows uh, with Lamella leaving, the final one of the Bale 7. But that was the line they said. It was, yeah, pour one out for old uh, Coco. But uh, but that was what that was actually the line that I think Spurs kind of put out into the media. Like, hey, hey, we sold Elvis, but we bought the Beatles. And that was not the Beatles, okay? They, they bought, <laughs> that so was they a Beatles cover band. band. They ended up yeah. with Sonny and Cher, basically. Right. That was that was a Beatles cover band. Literally, Hinman's son and Erickson being playing right. for Cher. Well, Sonny wasn't Sonny wasn't one of the seven. But I know, but it still feels better than saying that way. I see what you're doing there. Um, but I, I actually I use that line for Villa because this is effectively I, I I'm a bigger believer in these three than I was of those seven. Um, yeah. Especially at the yeah. time, I was like, all right. Anyway. Uh, I, mean, I think what, that what, they what, build on last year. Yeah, what Villa is doing is is more targeted. I think when I mean Grealish sort of went down back half of the season and they sputtered down the stretch. Uh, yeah. You know, the excitement of them. Remember, it was them in Southampton that we mm-hmm. really liked early, and Everton was kind of like, whoa, Everton, especially the first three games. Uh, right. And then Southampton got beat nine nil and had to basically restart their season again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> again, I don't know how the fuck that happened, uh, but then. <laughs> You know, it sort they sort of faded, and I kept and and my love really stuck on to Brighton and Villa. They really didn't have another great result the rest of the season that you can really stand out on. But I think you know, with Grealish gone, I think they can be, they can show the the value in some other players. Like I really love John McGinn. I really love Douglas Luiz. I really love uh, Matt Target's really fucking good. Like that team is really really good. El Ghazi, really, they've got a handful of those yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. El Ghazi was, was had some big finishes in the end, and then Watkins would just run and run and run and run and run. And yeah. now they have, I think, Watkins was a good finisher, but Danny Ings is a next level. Like the guy, he's, he's a clinical finisher. 
Yes, and we, so that's the thing is that you're, you're, you're taking the support of Grealish away, but Buendia and Bailey uh, and, and the supporting cast are going to help that. But also having Watkins to run off of, there's going to be times where Rock, Watkins makes a run and the, the ball goes into the box. I see Danny Ings. He's a nose. He's a good passer. Kind of, he, yes. Yeah. But what I'm saying is he's a nose for the neck kind of guy, but I, I almost see him holding back a step or two and waiting. Like there's going to be times where Watt goes backs. for the back post the cutback ball, balls and like even just the ping pong bounce around the box, he's going to finish those 10 out of 10 They have to be, they have to be worried times. about, I mean, he his issue is injury, right? Like yep. if he wasn't injured, he would have been Liverpool's striker and history would be different, right? He might mm-hmm. be in the Firmino role and they might have never had Firmino or they might have never got money or they one of those guys would have never sure. been around. Uh, they, by all yeah. accounts, Klopp loved him and they were just like, dude, his fucking knee's gone, dude. So, and you can see it when he runs. It looks like something's wrong. With his right. Team. And so there's going to be times. He's not going to play 38 games. There's going to be times where he needs to take a day or he'll play 60 minutes or whatever. And, yeah, and this is a, an optimistic case. Hopefully, hopefully he's not going to miss any length of time with injuries. If you're a betting man, put a couple of shekels on that, though. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's 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 15, but he'll he's 15 in 25 games kind of score right like sure he just can't yep. he just can't play 30 he just can't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then you know we have we have so much fucking football coming you know we have the <laughs> jared Shields saturday the like, official like, start of the of 2021 the 2022 season so yeah as we said in the it's, open it's the super cup for other countries basically. yeah i know i know it's it's the beginning uh, this is the Last episode of season one of the Squeaky Bum Time podcast. You made it. Uh, it Mike. is the beginning of the the next season. We made it. Um, <laughs> what what we're going to talk about in the next episode, which will officially be the first episode of season two, is our predictions. Um, top four, uh, Golden Boot, um, and and relegation. But one thing I want to pivot to, yeah, yeah. One thing I want to pivot to. Uh, there's a lot of fantasy drafts that have been happening, um, and I find it interesting that. You know, there's rumored players who are still coming in. So I'm curious how leagues sort of reconcile that. We have a pretty good system in our league with like waiver wires and bud and, and bidding and all that stuff. But I the reason we've waited to next Wednesday to do our draft drafts, I should say, with both divisions, um, is because we want to make sure that everybody gets in uh, and has that availability and all the breath, full breath of players to choose from, of course. And with that said, uh, there is no greater tradition. Uh, prior to a fantasy season than discussing some of the players who we think might be busts go too high and shit the bed and sleepers. So Laurent, you had a good one. Who's your, your biggest fantasy bust for the 2021, 2022 premier league. Yeah, season? I, I am. I am not high on Jamie Vardy, not because he's getting worse, but because Lester sees the writing on the wall. He's still an mm-hmm. incredible player. Uh, you know, he, he led the league in assists from shots in that he shot and gave up other assists by shooting. There's was really right. good stats on an FB ref. Uh, his goals were down and he had a, a, a poor for him expected goal tally, but he's 35, I think 34. And mm-hmm. the real problem is, is that uh, Lester has brought in a guy called Daka or Daku, not Daku. Patson Pats and Daka. DACA, right? Not, not, not the immigration reform thing. That well, we'll not discuss that. Um, <laughs> they're dreamers. They're dreamers. Uh, you know, I'm a dreamer. I dream of tanks rolling through Western Europe. In my there it is, folks. Your Nazi reference of the week. We got it, got it in at the bell. Ah! Uh, but no, uh, I think you're right. Jamie, Jamie Vardy would have been a good, really good World War One soldier, running across no man's land. A great <laughs> scout. He would have seen the Jerry's coming across. He would have used all the slurs against them. But he's a guy you want in a foxhole. He's a real foxhole player. But I, I think that his his replacement is on the way with Daka. And I think what will happen is is Daka will score goals early, and the plan and Jamie Vardy will pick up a hamstring, and he'll go on a run. And then yeah, you'll have Daka and Nacho. Uh, Daka is an African player who's now in the secret the secret Red Bull uh, academy system between between Leipzig and uh, Rebzil Salzburg. Great players are coming through those teams, and our own Jesse March, the American, is actually the coach at Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, so he's he knows a bit about Daka, uh, and he scored almost thirty goals in in a 
good league at a good level, like Champions League. So yeah. uh, I'm interested in what happens. Maybe maybe it's a maybe he's a maybe Daka is a 25 game player. Maybe he he can score 10 in the season. But I mm-hmm. think he takes it away from Vardy. Um, but you know, so that's a two I, for just, one. You've just, got a sleeper yeah. there. And a and a fan yeah. and a high level bust. Vardy for me yeah. is, is is he's your classic. And again, we're we're Americanizing fantasy sports for the yeah. Premier League, which by the way is how you all should be doing it. Because FBL is just like throwing a stone into the ocean. Like have a good fucking time, idiot. But uh, Vardy seems like the guy who's over the hill and doesn't know it yet. And this is the season where everybody goes, oh, we're never ever going to talk about him seriously again yeah. from a fantasy yeah, point mean, of the, view, right? The thing, the thing that's so interesting about Vardy, which makes him such a, a weird fantasy player, is that he's so reliant on goals because he literally is one of the least, he's a player who touches the ball least in the and plays the most. He's mm-hmm. all about running and one touch. He doesn't take touches in the box. It's, I'm on it, I'm shooting. Because yeah. he's run to the place he needs to be without it being a one, two, he doesn't generate assists. He doesn't really need the ball. He's like, he's the best scorer off the ball in the league. Basically he's, he's, uh, he's Thompson from, uh, from, from the Warriors who almost scored 50 points on, I think 40 touches. So some ridiculous. Clay Thompson. Yeah. He, he, no, Clay Thompson. He didn't bounce the ball. That's what it was. He, he right. scored 50 on only seven bounces, which mm-hmm. is insane. Like, what? um, one of one another one I'm I'm thinking about is uh, one right, of I'm our really, favorites. I'm really proud of that. That that Vardy is Clay Thompson is. That's a strong that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> one of the ones I'm I'm worried about uh, from a value perspective is one of our favorites, uh, oh. a guy we waxed poetically about last year. We waxed poetically about the whole team from Southampton last year early. The, great, the greatest uh, middle class player in, in the middle league. <laughs> wow. James Ward Prowse. Um, <laughs> he's still Ward-Prowse. a wizard with a free kick. Yeah. yeah, he's still a wizard with a free kick, uh, and we reward that handsomely in our league. Yeah. But and he's, um, and he's still looking for the gigantism of Westergaard's head. He literally <laughs> yeah, right. has gigantism. But he lost Ings, and he he yeah. obviously wouldn't have had Ings for the whole season. But a full season of Che Adams is going to hurt him. And and by the way, Southampton as a whole is trouble. not. They're yeah, they're a potential relegation candidate. I'm I'm worried for them. Um, James Ward Prowse. The weird thing about the Premier League fantasy in general, right, is that like you want to target potentially great but good players on usually bad teams because they won't have internal competition. Um, but I just I'm worried for for JWP on this. He's um, he's going to have a fine season, but where he's being drafted, where his, his ADP is, I very concerned for whoever is going to put that that price tag on him. Um, I just. I want to love him still, but I'm not. I'm not ready to make that jump. And then another one going on the other side of the spectrum is uh, is is a player that I didn't get to keep in our league, and it's going to keep me up at night after the draft because he won't make it back to me. Is uh, your Lord and Savior, uh, Phil Foden, and yeah. I just think he, as you mentioned before, we talked at, at nauseum about how many options there are uh, up top. Whether oh. you're right and he becomes that false nine or 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 not. He's going to lose a, a, a significant amount of time. I've had players in the pep, you know, kind of um, the pep zone, pep the pep zone. zone, if you will. Yeah, like the the merry go round, where it's like, okay, yeah, this player's in. Uh, it's horrible. So yeah, as so. much as it's going to bother me that I have the sixth pick after our keepers are out, he's the second best player available. Um, somebody's going to pick him and it's going to make me sad, but it's basically you, whoever does that is going to save me from myself. So I'm, I'm happy about that. So. I don't know if you know this. Did you know that Villa paid 38 million for Danny Ings? Holy shit. 38 million. Okay. I'm going to, I want to, well, I that's, take back some of the, says. that's, that's a big number. I Perfect. don't believe that. That's a says, lot of money for it Danny says Ings. Thirty-eight million dollars. That that I would believe three point eight before I would believe thirty-eight. <laughs> hey man, if he that if feels well, like a, not, no wonder they sold him. It's like, of course. Yeah, that so, feels like a classic. They, by the way, they have, uh, they have nothing. They have nothing. They have not bought anyone. They they no. have. It's it's Theo Walcott. It's oh, gonna be up front. <laughs> that feels no, and Che Adams. I just yeah, horrible. Che Adams is Che Adams is not. No, 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 not at all. Um, tell me about your favorite. What are the themes that we find kind of identified before we came on recording about some sleepers? 
What was like the one theme amongst a bunch of them? Well, I am a fan of of championship players. I am a fan. It. I do take on some of my old school baseball feeling of like, guys, when you go and look at the lower leagues, and I do check them all the time. I follow the championship, at least cursory. I go on who scored and look at who's scoring. And when you see someone stand out and that makes you watch the team, uh, it really makes a difference. Season before last, Timu Puki was the man I identified from the championship, yeah. scored 28 goals, high-flying Norwich. I killed it in the first uh, half of the season. Last yeah, season. it was one of those where you made that pick and everyone went, fucking who? And you're like, Timu Puki, idiots. And, <laughs> and he, then last season was Jared off. Bowen. Jared Bowen, who had scored 20 goals at the half for Hull, they sold him and got relegated <laughs> from the championship. So they were like, he's going to keep us up, but we can't afford him. He goes yeah. to, to West Ham, and he has a really good and important season. He's part of the Moyes Assants that West Ham had, and he, I was proud of him. And he's been linked, a light link, like a sprinkle, a sprinkle to Liverpool, uh, whether that's true or not. And then this season, I've got I've got, I've got, got Ivan Tony from Brentford, who is a Big, strong, classic forward and finisher. I mean, this guy's big. He's a big six foot four mobile finisher. He set the record for goals in the championship. I think he had 34, yeah. 31. So this is not a joke. And I'm sure he's he's obvious, but I think you can probably look at a couple Brentford guys that maybe had down seasons last year. I think Ben Rama for uh, West Ham will be really good this season because they had they had so if they had Ben Rama, Watkins, Tony, Mopai, that is the group of players that Brentford has brought through. And whoever is the striker for Brentford, that's your next man because they know what they're doing. <laughs> so uh, keep an eye on that. And then um, Harvey Elliott is a player who's a le- – a, 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 a He's from Liverpool, Liverpool player. originally. Right, but he was at Blackburn last season – Led the league in goals and assists combined. Incredible season. Uh, whether he's able to move through, I would be. I would keep my eye on him. And then Connolly. Is it Connolly? Donnelly? Who's the kid? Who's the kid from from Chelsea? The little one, the Scottish one. Oh, the little guy, the Scottish kid. Shit, I can see his really, face. Yeah, 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 really, really, really good. He's gonna take yeah. the Buendia role for Norwich, and mm-hmm. he might be a real sleeper really good take that role like these are the teams that are doing it right like if you want to do the money ball thing and sort of think about think about being in fantasy in 98 99 2000 and you're just like there's some stupid ass billy gilmore out there. we were not yeah, billy we were not close yeah. yeah well he was Connolly irish whatever he looked like the other Connolly that played for brighton. <laughs> brighton is still on my mind um Billy Gilmore. Uh, he's playing for Norwich. He's really good. The only issue I'd have with him, he's probably five, six. Five, <laughs> seven. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get some. Yeah, you got to be careful beatings. there. But uh, at 19 years old, is he physically ready? Uh, will they play him? You know, I, I think that Daniel Fark is a guy who does play a certain way. So that's one of the things to think about is will Brentford keep attacking? I think they will. Mm-hmm. Uh, will Norwich keep attacking? I think they will. That says do not draft their defensive players ever because they're going to no, get no, don't be, don't be right? silly. There's going to be games. Um, there's going to be games where they lose five two, five three, uh, and then mm-hmm. I, I think uh, and avoid as a team. I would avoid Leeds. I'm worried for them for some reason. Ooh, you're know. out on Leeds. I'm not out on them. I just don't see the bodies to replace players. There's nothing coming in. And that team is now mm. on year three from the championship. Like, these guys have come up together. It's year three under Bielsa. You think the legs are going to fall off a little bit? I just don't know. I don't I don't trust Bamford. See, it's interesting. For me, I actually – I was going to say Bamford had 17 goals last year. He finished right around the fifth in the league with all of he those misses. He should have had 30. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think half of those go in for him this year. I think he's challenging. This is my hot take of the season. Ooh. I think Patrick Bamford is challenging. He's not going to win for the Golden Boot this year. I'll tell you why he won't. He's not athletic enough. You can tell. He literally is running and he's fit. He doesn't get to the place you need. That's him why to it's get a hot to. take. That's why it's a hot take. So we can in no, no, six no, no, months no. we can go, Mike, you fucking idiot. Sort of like here's a couple. Sort of like, 
it's sort of like you have a, a, a ball player, a baseball player who you know is good. Like he's, it's, it's, it's David Eckstein. You're like, I know you're good. You're How? just too small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And uh, Altuve is like the best version of that guy, like gamer, tiny, destructive universe. I know we all hate him, but that, but we didn't hate him until we hated him. Right. Like all the years yeah. when they were losing 150 games and Altuve was like, He's like, Pedroia, <laughs> like the, the, that, that, those little guys, those Pedroyas where you're like, you're not an athlete. Fuck off. And you're like, <laughs> there he is. That's what I feel about Bamford. He's like a, he, he's like a fucking literature pro- professor at a small middle, uh, liberal arts school. And now he's playing striker. Like, where the fuck is this guy from? That's fair. So I'll give you three, <laughs> uh, following on the Norwich van wagon, uh, Todd Cantwell. Uh, I think he will, I, I, by the way, fucking hate this guy's face. Um, but I think no, he's, he's fun though. He does like all the moves. He's got yeah, 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 yeah. All big. He's they may you know what him, he is. So be careful. He, that's true. He's a shit, shit, Jack Grealish. Shit, Grealish. They um, may go for Gre- he may go to Villa. He might go to Villa. I would. Yeah, uh, he's a very well, for, shit for, Jack Grealish for thirty-eight million pounds. That's what. Well, um, I think he's. I think the way to think about him is is he's Madison. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. My, one of my favorites, which, by the way, I stole a page out of your book a few years ago. I paid attention to a player who had come out of the championship with the most shots taken. And I went, I like yes. this guy. Harvey Barnes. <laughs> Harvey Barnes yes, from last year. <laughs> uh, I call him Harvey shoot first, ask questions later, Barnes. Oh, what a legend. Um, what a legend. When he, he was just, a villa, he was fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just, he would, he literally. Yeah, Lester he, was he, like, we'll, ha- we'll have some of that. He takes so many <laughs> shots that he inherently gets you fantasy points just by by being on the field, right? So yeah. it's not that he chips in a ton of goals, but he he's you your he's your your he slow looks, hum, right? He he's your, and you need he guys like great. that. He looks great. I love I love Harvey Barnes. So he's been my guy he's for a, a few years. He's so English. His name is Harvey Barnes. The hair <laughs> is tight. The blue looks good on him. He's that when they play the three up front with. Um, with Madison, Vardy, and Barnes, it's fun. And I do think, I and do then, think, I think, I think there's an interesting move here. I do think Madison could move, and Hiannaccio could be the ten for that team because hmm, he's not a nine. Hiannaccio has secretly been playing as a nine and is not a nine. He needs to be. He's a he's a ten in a nine's body. He's a nine and a half. Um. Uh. So and then like one other cock. one is it's a... like it's cock. <laughs> 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 dick jokes nazis trains planes fantasy all the hits and automobiles for the, for the nine and a half ihanacho joke uh that's gotta you be were a rewarded. description of the show you were rewarded for uh, that <laughs> uh, i want to end it on it. that but i want to say one more real quick before we go uh and it's it's a bit of a controversial sleeper but whatever um hakim ziek from from chelsea hakim ziek so- hakim <laughs> he is so good, and he didn't really see the field last year as a function of injuries. Um, his injury, you could argue, really kind of paved the way for guys like Mount to kind of really step into the team. Um, I think he I think has a I full think a, season. A under season his belt. at Derby with with Frank is what paved the way, but I think well, sure. To- but 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 having that that spot to walk in, right? Ziek was a yeah. big money signing. Um, unlike. The other big money signing, Timo Werner, who, I mean, it's a little obvious to put him in the bust category at this point. He was a bust last year. Um, but having Ziek, having Ziek in that in that wide role, he's he's like Mares light for me. So I think that the value you can get for him. He's very Mares, yes. Yeah. So I, I like him uh, late. And this the is thing, the part the, where – The thing that I – sorry, one point. The thing yeah. that I worry about with Chelsea, even though I think that they are the challenge for City. Sure. That team is slight. They're little slips of men. And I think, you know, they can play Polish, well against City, yeah. but when they have to when they've got to play Burnley, when it, but there's not a lot of teams like that anymore, but right. I there's think there's no they, Tuesday they, nights at Stoke. They can be got at if you rough them up. That's how you beat them. Yeah. I Although agree. Rudiger is pretty good about being like don't rough my guys up. I'll break your fucking orbital bone. He <laughs> So yeah, I do like that. that. A good I do, open I, I do, hit by Rudiger. I do. I do worry about 
uh, them losing Zuma because I think they they need they need more physical anyway. Up front, they're slight. They're a little papery. Kind of no, you're stuff. absolutely right. Um, and they're gonna they're gonna sell guys like Tammy Abraham who have that substance to them, which I they find miss, they left Giroud leave, who I thought was so important for them off the bench. Just why not? Anyway, we'll be here for another hour talking about Chelsea, but we'll talk about them on Monday. <laughs> Enjoy the Community Shield, Laurent. Let's get the hell out of here. That was the Squeaky Bum Time podcast with Mike Slurano and Laurent Cortina in her knees. Uh, we are the football wing of the Chop Sports Network. We record on Tuesdays and Fridays, so be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're listening on Apple, please rate and review the show because it makes a huge, huge difference like the Nachos. 